In this next little tutorial, I'm going to be talking about the clone stamp tool and the spot healing tool, the differences there, and also the magic lasso tool and how we can use it to make um, some very pretty but also sometimes some uh, kind of comedic images. So you will be creating a before and after, um, after I've gone through this, of a portrait. You can use this file that I'll be working with or you can open up one of your own files that you brought to class, a portrait shot. And, and then um, I'm also going to encourage you to try to um, combine some images. Uh, they can be any image that you produced or brought to class. And then after um, I'm all done with this, you'll have three practice activities you can choose from and uh, to play around with. So uh, you might work with cloning practice, you can work with uh, making your own Valentine or Christmas card if you wish by bringing, combining images from Flickr. So you might bring a dog you like and put it into a background or add hearts to a background. Um, and finally, you might do some additional portrait work if you feel like that's the thing that you want to spend your time on. So let's get into working with the spot healing tool. This is very handy. This is an image from Flickr. It's got some problems. The boy seems to have a scar here. Um, he's got plenty of freckles and we don't want to change the way he looks, although uh, I will show you how to remove the occasional spot. Uh, I had a friend whose son in, in their portrait that was taken of them had some nose dirt and uh, that showed up in the image. So she complained and it went back. It got photoshopped out um, and she was pleased with the image that she spent money buying. So this is what we do with Photoshop. We're going to go over here to the spot healing tool. And now with the spot healing tool, the difference is I have it pretty small right now. So I'm going to enlarge it just a little bit, a little bit more. Okay. So the spot healing tool is different from the clone stamp tool. The spot healing tool takes uh, a sampling of the pixels around the spot that I select and when I click off of it it's used those pixels to make a change so that didn't do a lot but I can try again so it's going to sample the pixels and try to um, represent those that sampling and so now if we take a look I'll, I'll control plus so we can get a little bit closer in there to see what it did Okay, so he's got some um, some pigmentation alterations here, which looks pretty natural, and I'm okay with that. I'm going to be pretty pleased with that. So now I'll just show you if I should choose to take out one or two of these freckles. Maybe there's a freckle out of place, or someone has you know a blemish on their face that we want to remove. Let's imagine it's one of those. So maybe this darker one down here. If I just click on it, it's removed because it sampled the um, the skin tone all around the edge. Now this doesn't always work there. It got a little darker, so that one wasn't a great success. Okay, so um, this is a way that we can fix a, you know, a scab or um, a blemish that's not a long-term term thing. If someone has something on their face and that's how they look, you don't want to um, make them look any different than what they truly are, but, but we can certainly remove healing wounds uh, another problem with this image is, I think, the, the color. It's, it's a little blue. So I'm going to work through how to adjust that color. We're going to go over here um, into, let me close this panel down. I'm going to bring up this adjustments panel. And I showed you before how to work with contrast and brightness. And, and that's a good one. But right now, I'm going to show you how to work in hue and saturation. So we can use this to add a little warmth if we want to to the image so it can go a little crazy there so you can see can I intensify the hues it seems to like this picture seems to like the blue hues but I can move it down a little bit get rid of a little of that blue so that's an option I have um, close out of that so another option is I can look at photo filter, and this is a way that maybe I want to work in sepia. So they give you some options, uh, some defaults, and you can add these tones if you want to add a warming tone, a cooling tone, and maybe I just want to go straight for sepia. It's going to add that sepia tone. Now it's not a very dense sepia, so if I want to increase the sepia, 
um, and it brings it closer to that old-fashioned photograph look uh, that maybe you want to have. You could you can work with that. So that's the way you add that kind of filter. So just to show you again, it's in the adjustments panel, and these different filters oops, were in were here under this little um, camera icon. So now I've removed his healing scar and healing scab, and I've changed the filter a little bit. All right. The next tool that I want to introduce you to is the magic lasso tool. So that's over here. And I'm going to select this. What I'm going to do here is use the magic lasso tool. And it pretty much catches on to the, the color variation. So it knows that I want to grab the red here. And as long as I'm fairly careful with it, um, it's going to stick to the outline that it finds as I draw around this Nyssa, which is a Icelandic uh, gnome character, kind of an, an elf. So going around the Nyssa. And what I'm planning to do with this is I'm going to use the magic lasso tool to select this Nyssa and then I'm only going to cut just the Nissa out of this picture, and I'm going to paste him into another background. So this is not a, a very serious project. This is more just to show what uh, we can do with Photoshop. And I'm not even going to be quite as careful because it's not a serious project. Okay, so I've connected it, and you can see the marching ants is what we call them, and all right. So now I've got my marching ants. Um, I can do edit and cut, and there he's gone. So he's missing, but I'm going to paste him into this other picture. This is the background of a very famous waterfall in. Iceland, and I want my troll to go here. Um, it's just going to be a silly picture. I could pretend uh, you could really do anything. Uh, you could get much more complicated with this. Uh, I've seen where you can take um, a horse silhouette, add some wings, turn it to black and white, and it looks like you have a Pegasus. So that's what we sometimes do with Photoshop. So I'm going to edit and paste in my Nissa. Uh, he's kind of big. Oops. forgot to turn off my magic lasso tool and that causes problems all right so now I'm gonna move my little Nissa here so he can look at the, the waterfall all right I'm just gonna paste him in again and move him over so here's my Nissa I can add some type here if I want to and and that's just a, um, a way that we can combine images I just wanted to show you in the most basic way possible. Now one of your options for your projects to work on is to create a Valentine card. So I'll show you something that I made and I have to tell you I had a very uh, exacting client to work for. My daughter and I made this together. So um, we were using the burn and dodge tool to lighten and darken the areas. Uh, she wanted some misty smoke around here um, and we ran into this guy at a Harry Potter conference. So uh, this is something that you might choose to do if you're creating a Valentine's Day card or maybe you are going to um, create a Christmas card, but those are some of the options you have uh, as you're playing around with these um, these tools that I've been introducing you to. All right, so that was your portrait fix and lasso tool. I didn't go over the dodge and burn in this, but... Um, I think I think that's probably going to be enough for this one. So why don't you try try that out? You're going to create um, fix some kind of portrait, either this one or your own portrait, and also practice pasting an element from one photo into another one, and then move on. And you can choose uh, which of these three practice activities you want to try. I've got some Icelandic stew that has some legs sticking out of it, so you can use the clone stamp tool, or you could also um, you could try. If you want to to use, oh yeah, I think you need the, the clone stamp tools because it's such a large area. Um, you can also use type and magic lasso paste to make your own Valentine card, 
or just select another portrait to fix. So whichever one you do, uh, you can add that to your before and after shots and then send that final large PDF version of your InDesign file with your, your portfolio and submit that to Canvas.